The Shaw Purely Law Group and Emmy Law Help Inc. are proud to announce the release of the Immigration Law Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and other renowned podcast channels. Immigration Law Podcast was designed to provide the audience with information on various U.S. immigration issues. The podcasts are unique because they are presented by the prominent attorney, Shaw Purely, covering topics such as B-1, B-2 visas, visitor and business visas, H-1B visas, L-1 visas, O visas, EB-1 visas, student visas, perm labor certifications, national interest waivers, NIW, green cards, and citizenship. Although educational in nature, the podcasts provide a rare insight on immigration news and politics from an experienced lawyer's perspective. Immigration Law Podcasts, a unique perspective on immigration law. Download them from iTunes or Google Play. For more information, visit attorneyonair.com or call 510-742-5887. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. Are you an H-1B visa holder? Do you have an I-140 petition approved or have an extension under AC-21 provisions? Are you on H-4 visa? If yes, we've got amazing news for you. As of May 26, 2015, you or your spouse on H-4 visa might be eligible for a work permit, a.k.a. EAD. And to apply, you need a lawyer who knows about H-4 visa issues. Lawyer Shah Parali has been at the forefront of this fight for H-4 rights and has actually helped make this dream a reality. Now, his firm is ready to help you or your spouse get their EADs. Call 510-742-5887 or visit www.splgpc.com to apply for your EAD. This is an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. And now, from the San Francisco Bay Area Studios, KLOK proudly presents to you the prominent attorney, Shaw Perelli, for the Shaw Perelli Law Show, coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Perelli Law Show, where all your views matter. Hello, 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 everybody. Assalamu alaikum, sastikar, namaskar to all the listeners. This is attorney Shah Parali for the Shah Parali Law Show. And of course, our weekly show today, we're going to discuss about immigration and debt settlement. And I have on the board today my, my good friend and very punctual friend, uh, Franco. And uh, I wanted to say thank you to him. He's always really sharp on time, making sure things are done properly. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. Again, this is Attorney Sharp Riley for the Sharp Riley Law Show. And everything I'm going to tell you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact the attorney if you have any questions. The number to our office, 510-742-5887, 510-742-5887. So we're going to open the line in two minutes. So the number to the studio today is 408-912-5565, 408-912-5565. And uh, we, we will be taking questions on everything immigration from employment-based H-1B, L-1, O, P, you name it, and adjustment of status, marriage petitions, uh, you name it. Anything you have on immigration where I can help you, I will be more than glad to give you an educational answer. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, today we're going to discuss there are many things happening on immigration. Uh, so, for example, we have issues right now. Uh, there was this call from, from, uh, from Donald Trump, of course, of banning uh, a, a number of people around around the world to come to the United States, and uh, there was a very good analysis yesterday on the CNN uh, website, where basically they analyze uh, who is going to affect. And if you look at it, 
it's affecting almost almost uh, 50 countries in the world approximately and which means that it will be affecting 10.5 million people and that includes uh, visas such as B1, B2, F1, H1, you name it. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, all those things are going to affect uh, the dynamic what is happening right now on immigration front, although I don't think this will, will, will really happen. Uh, the truth is that it is going to affect, influence the whole uh, nine year in the next future. So let me take one caller before we continue. This is Sharp Rai. You are live in here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is. Hi. Uh, uh, hi. I have a question for Sharp Rai. Yeah. This is Shah. You are live in here, sir. Go ahead. Okay. So my wife is currently on uh, H1, uh, but she was trying to get like. Uh, uh, full-time opportunity so she's not able to get because no, nowadays uh, not many people are accepting H1 so we are planning to switch her to EAD uh, like mm -hmm. the H4 EAD that you guys are advertising but mm -hmm. uh, in case if I lose my job in the future is it a risk converting H1 to EAD like the H4 EAD or uh, is it sa safe to be stay on H1 which one uh, you suggest because if you mm -hmm. go on EAD you don't need employer to sponsor any visa or anything. Yes, yes, exactly. Actually, it's safer for her to go in H4 EAD. And the good news is that any time, let's say something is happen, is going to happen to you on H1, hopefully you will know like one or two weeks before. As soon as you know that, then quickly, hopefully, she will have an offer. You can shift her back to H1 and you shift on H4. So, no, the safest idea, if you don't have a constant job, is to move to H4 EAD. Because H4 EAD doesn't have a requirement for you to work. It doesn't have any requirement, actually, uh, at all. Because the truth is that the H4 EAD uh, is, um, is, is like, a, a, it's like a, it's a work permit, right? So whenever she wants to work, she works. Whenever she doesn't want to work, she doesn't have to work. So the best idea is to move her to H4 EAD. And at a later stage, if you think you, your H1 is in jeopardy, then you do the same. You, you, you move her back to H1 if possible, and you move to H4. Okay. And one one last question is the there is a quota sixty five thousand and twenty thousand. Once you convert from H four to H one, will you come under that quota in the future or no? No, you don't because you are cap exempt unless you already complete your six years and you don't have an I one forty. No, you don't. You just it takes three weeks to convert it back to H one. Actually, it's very okay. easy. Because okay. I do it all the time. So right now the best answer yes move to H four because H four is a lot more powerful in this in her case than the h1 so i would recommend moving to h4 and if you are having confusion give me a call at the yes. office 510-742-5887 sure. i'll guide you how to do it but right now a very good idea to move to h4 okay 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 thanks a good lot day. i'll give a call <laughs> good luck to you let me take another caller this is shop right you're alive in here hi sir this is Santosh. like that um, uh, thanks a lot for the show uh, oh, a couple of things that you spoke about, 140 EAD is not coming, but there are something else uh, can, upload, can be uploaded. So can, can you brief a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Actually, I wrote an article about this on, on, the, on the website, and I have also YouTube and that. But I'll just tell you quickly, because it's kind of long, so I'll tell quickly the main points. What is coming out is a rule. Well, it's not coming out yet, by the way. It's just past the comments uh, portion. It has not become low or anything. But the proposition will allow that um, basically pe employers after 180 days will not be able to revoke the I-140, number one. That means you can keep that I-140 to go ahead in the future file for your H-1. But that I-140 is not to get a green card, okay? Because a green card, you still have to redo the labor certification and new I-140 if you move to another employer. The only advantage you will have, like, for example, like you need that I-140 to go beyond six years, you will be able to use it. That's one. Number two, they will have issues also on, they will give grace period on H-1, et cetera. So this is what, what it is. But it's not an EAD. The EAD rule was something different. It has not really been gone through because uh, this one even is not com completed, right? So we are hoping it will become low because it passed the comment stage, and now we are just waiting for the for Obama to decide. But with all the things happening internationally, I doubt they will pass anything right now. But let us hope, okay? Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Let me take, uh, okay, I don't think I have other callers right now. So feel free, ladies and gentlemen, we have some very good questions right now, one on H4 EAD, and the other one is, of course, under the 
under the situation of uh, uh, like we have right now is um, on that new EAD, uh, not EAD, I-140 rule. Just remember that I-140 rule is not really the one that we were hoping, but at least it is something. It's not great. So uh, unfortunately, it's not like we can just jump. And then I know the economy is not doing well right now because I'm hearing every day pretty much people getting laid off. But that things, are, but still, there are startups out there. There are still businesses where people can transfer their H-1B. Just make sure it is done on time, because if you don't do it on time, you'll have issues that will be coming in the near future, and it will affect you really, really immensely. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, like I say, 408-912-5565 is the number to the studio, the number to our office, 510-742-5887. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rally. You're live in here. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, Chef. Uh, I have a question. Uh, my wife H uh, four EAD got approved. Uh, so, what is the next step? Do we need to apply SSN for her, or uh, just we can directly apply the for jobs? No, you have to apply for the social security. <laughs> you cannot work without that. So, apply for the social security first thing. And as soon as you get your social security number, you can start working. But you can apply for the jobs in the meantime and wait on the social security. I don't know the, really the time it's taking on social security, but most people tell me within two, three weeks they're getting it. So go ahead and start applying for jobs and social security at the same time, okay? But okay, you cannot work you so until much. you get that. Yeah. yeah, get the social security before you start working, okay? Good luck to you. Okay, okay let me take another caller. This is Sharp Roy. You're live here. Hey, hey uh, this is Prashant. So I have a quick question. Uh, actually, my wife is on OPT. Uh, currently, we apply for STEM extension for 24 months. Mm -hmm. So we just want to go go to India and come back. She doesn't have uh, the F1 stamping. She came here on H4 and uh, she converted to F1. So we are planning to go to India. And I have my Y140 also approved. So is the best to go on the OPT stamping or else like... Uh, uh, to get the H4 stamping and uh, get the H4 EAD after coming here. She's uh, currently doing job also. Okay, that's a very good question. She's under OPTX stamp, right? And you already did the yes. Form 983 and everything, right? Yeah, we mm -hmm. just dropped it, so we didn't have any result on it. So we just uh, uh, okay. like uh, submitted yesterday mm -hmm. for the OPTX stamp. Okay, this is a very good question. It's more general question. The, the rule is, is okay, you have the OPT extension, which is good. It's 24 months. It's safe. The only problem is that there are a lot of strings attached to this OPT. I don't know if you look at it. First, the job. First, the, two, the monitoring. Three, you have to maintain it. And and four, if you go outside the country, the OPT is not is not approved yet. Guess what? They will not even consider a stamping for you. So if you want to travel at this point, the best is just to come back on H4 and apply for EAD under H4. But you will lose that 24 months. But I'm not very, I'm not a big fan anyway of that 24 month OPT because it has so much, so many problems attached to it that I don't even think it's worth it. So it's it's your call if you want to go for the stamping. But until the OPT is approved, uh, you will not even have a chance for the stamping. And also from my experience. While you are on OPT, getting a stamping of F1 is very difficult. So you can always try your OPT and if OPT stamping, uh, I mean, the F1 stamping is not, is not given to you, you go ahead and you move to the, you, you, have, you apply for the H4 and you come back. She already have an H4 stamp on her passport, right? Yes. Yeah, then she can just come back on her H4. But my recommendation is not to really uh, go for OPT. Give me a call at the office because there are some other factors which are kind of private I need to discuss before you, you make the decision for the stamping if you want. 510-742-5887. Uh, but personally, I will go for the H4. I don't trust that OPT at all. Okay? All right. Okay, sure. Uh, thanks. Sir. Good luck to you. <laughs> Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. Uh, hi, Sean. I, I have a quick question. Uh, uh, can uh, somebody on F1 OPT visa uh, work for a company and as well as uh, start his own company in Thailand? Um, it depends what OPT you 
have. I cannot hear you. There's a background noise. But just in general, I'll, I'll, I'll take the caller offline because I cannot. Uh, yeah. So sorry, I'm going to give the answer. Yes, um, you can open a business on the regular OPT, but the STEM OPT, there's another problem because the new STEM OPT, if you look at it, the issues of monitoring, et cetera, et cetera, it, it becomes a big issue. But yes, you can have a business. Uh, under the new STEM OPT, I don't know really. Uh, on the old OPT, the regular one, yes, you can have a business and also have the, the you have can have two jobs, for example. But on the STEM OPT, I don't know. I, we have to look into that. This is not something really, really made clear, but I'm pretty sure no because of the monitoring part of it. But I have to look into that. But the regular OPT, yes, you can have a business, but make sure that you're compliant with all the rules of OPT because it can come back and backfire, okay? So let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai. You're live on air. Hello. Your phone, I cannot hear. Let me take another Hi. caller. Sorry for that. Uh, hello, this is Sharp Rai. You're live on air. Hello. Okay, so I'm so sorry. I don't know if it is a problem. From I'm pretty sure it's probably uh, because people are calling from their cell phone. And I apologize for that. Please call on the number 408-912-5565. 408-912-5565. This is Attorney Sharp Rally from the Sharp Rally Law Group. And we are discussing today, ladies and gentlemen, about issues related to, um, to of course, immigration. And in a few minutes, we're going to discuss about debt settlement. And uh, let me take a call. This is Sharp Rally. You're live in here. Hello, Asha. I have two separate questions. Uh, uh, go ahead, let's see. Order. Uh, you know, my first question is my wife converted from H1 to H4 EAD recently. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to know if she wants to get back to H1, is there any time limit? She only completed those three years. She has uh, three more years. But do we have to get back to H1 like in within a one year if we want to continue using the three years? Or, you know, uh, can we go back to, can she go back to H1 after two years? Is it possible? Yes. As long oh. as she does it within six years, unless she has an I-140, she's good. She can move to it. She has six years, basically, to reclaim that rest of the H-1. Okay? Oh, okay. She can do it any time, right? Okay. Not any time. Within six years after that. You have six years maximum to reclaim that three years left. Okay? Oh, okay. So she has... Uh, her H-1 was approved back in 2010. So mm -hmm. if we have... I mean, 2012... If you want to go back, we have to do it within uh, 2018, right? Uh, actually, you can you can go to 2021 because it's the last date she's, she has worked. But I would recommend by 2018, if you have to shift, at least shift back to the H1. But if she has an I-140, then no problem. Okay? Hello? Yes? Live here. go ahead. Uh, hi, so I had a question. I'm on OPT right now, and mm -hmm. uh, my OPT expires on July, uh, July 31st. Um, I ap already applied for H4 plus EAD together um, mm -hmm. in February, but the California consulate says that uh, uh, they are still processing December. Uh, so am I legally allowed to stay here is my first question. And the second question is, can I uh, process my H-4 uh, in premium with my husband's H-1B extension, which is due in July? So which would be a better option for me? And uh, if I apply um, after July, um, is it okay? Okay. You got a bunch of questions right there. Let me take one by one. For one, uh, yeah, it is taking around 120 days right now to get those done. It's taking very long, not like before. We used to get them within six, seven weeks. Uh, and second, if you're filing an extension, uh, your husband is filing an extension, yes, I highly recommend you attach the H4 and the H4 EAD in that extension. Having said that, there is no premium for H4, but from our experience, Whenever you put the H4 with the H1 extension in premium, they go pretty much faster because they do everything at the same time. But there's no law that forces them to do faster. Now, if you want to go faster, the other options is you go ahead, you leave the country, you come back on H4, and then, and then you, you apply for the EAD. Now, as for filing the case, as soon as you file it, it's there and it's received on time, 
before the, the previous status expires, you are in a period of stay authorized by the Attorney General. That means you are legal in the United States. Even though you are not in a status, you are in a period of stay. So you are safe on that. Does that answer all the questions? Uh, right, it does. But the problem is his extension can be filed only after uh, a few days after my OPT is expiring. So in Yeah, but, but your, when is your OPT expiring? My, my OPT is expiring on 19th of July. And he can file for an extension only after 20 Yeah, but, but after your PT expires, you have 60 days grace period. You know that, right? Oh. No, I so didn't you know can, that. So you, you. Can, you, can, you can just merge it together. Right? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, I'll have to withdraw whatever application I have right now, EAD and H4, and submit both of them together along with his H1. Or could I retain the uh, EAD with? Hello? If you own a property and have a second mortgage on it, and if you want to keep this property and get rid of the second loan, attorney Shaw Perali can help. Call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Perali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Perali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit yourdebtsettlementattorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. Interesting question. So I just wanted to let her know uh, we are live on air right now, by the way. So um, if you need help on this case, because if you withdraw that H4, it will create some issues. So please give me a call 510 The Shaw Purely Law Group and Immy Law Help Inc. are proud to announce the release of the Immigration Law Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and other renowned podcast channels. Immigration Law Podcast was designed to provide the audience with information on various U.S. immigration issues. The podcasts are unique because they are presented by the prominent attorney, Shaw Purely, covering topics such as B-1, B-2 visas, visitor and business visas, H-1B visas, L-1 visas, O visas, EB-1 visas, student visas, perm labor certifications, national interest waivers, NIW, green cards, and citizenship. Although educational in nature, the podcasts provide a rare insight on immigration news and politics from an experienced lawyer's perspective. Immigration Law Podcasts, a unique perspective on immigration law. Download them from iTunes or Google Play. For more information, visit attorneyonair.com or call 510-742-5887. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. Beerables Inc. is an e-solutions company that provides custom web design, web application development, and internet marketing services to individuals and businesses. They can build powerful e-commerce sites, mobile apps, develop content, and market you on social media. They can help manage your brand's reputation and provide rock-solid customer support. 
Call today at 1-800-651-6091 or email us at info at beerbowls.com for a free consultation today. Again, the number is 1-800-651-6091. Thanks for a very good show. Thank you for the show and all the information that you're providing. Hi, Shah Thank you so much. Hi, uh, Mr. Shah. Thanks for uh, doing this program. Hi, Shah. Thank you. Uh, hi, Shah. Thanks for picking up my call. Uh, hi, Shah. My name is Kunal. Uh, let me thank you for this wonderful show. It's been a tremendous help, actually. Mr. Shah thanks for sharing the information. Good afternoon, sir. I would like to congratulate you. It's a wonderful show and lots of people are getting benefited in different areas like immigration and settlement and all. Yeah, good afternoon. So, first of all, thank you very much for providing all this uh, useful information. Really appreciate it. I've been listening to your shows. Uh, I know I'm, I've been listening to your shows only on Mondays, but I, 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 from now on I'll try to make it pointless into it, you know, the other days also. Thank you for doing such a great show. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. It's a wonderful welcome. show. Hi, Mr. Shah. I appreciate your talk show and uh, the listener uh, about this and it's very informative. Yeah, hi, Shah. Uh, hi. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Rajesh. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for taking my call and first of all, uh, thank you very much for your service, the community. Sir, so, thanks for briefing up the current situation. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's affecting both the good people as well, uh, whose aspiration is this, this country. Uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Shah. Uh, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, sir. Hi, this is Ravi. Thanks for taking my call, uh, Shah Prabhu. Hello, is this Mr. Shah Prabhu? Yeah, this is Shah. You're live on air? Yes, uh, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Good, thanks. Happy holidays. <laughs> oh, thank you, and the same to you. Hi, sir. Uh, it's a great show you're doing. Thanks for uh, all your help. Uh, thanks so much. From all of us at the Shaw Pirelli Law Group, we want to thank you, the audience, for making 2015 such a great year. We wish you a happy and prosperous year in 2016. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you very much. If you own a property and have a second mortgage on it, and if you want to keep this property and get rid of the second loan, attorney Shaw Pirelli can help. Call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Parali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Parali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit yourdebtsettlementattorney.com for a free assessment. This is just... Hello. Hello. I think, Franco, we have to take another caller because I think she has this, this radio on the background and I'm getting an echo. So... Let me take another caller. This is Shabra. Are you alive in here? Hello? No callers. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. We were having some issues and technical difficulties, and I had to reroute the line. And I apologize for that. We took the in the middle of, of, the, of, the, of the show, and I had Franco for actually kind of rerouting the whole thing for us. And I apologize again for the technical difficulties. So we were talking, of course, about immigration. We have a caller. We have, some left. we have one caller. Let me take the caller. This is Shabra. Hello? 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 Hello, hi. This is Shabra. Uh, uh, hello. Hello, Shah. Thanks for taking my call. I have You're a welcome. question uh, regarding the AC21 and uh, um, self-employment. Yes, go uh, ahead. Is it uh, possible to do that, or uh, what are the implications if I uh, want to open my own uh, company on EAD and uh, 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 do this AC21 for myself? Is it an option? Yes, it is an option. And the AC21, 
which is the, the portability provision, you can have it self-portability, you can move the entire case to your own company, provided you meet the requirements of EC21. 180 days has passed, and you move to a same or similar position. So the way you do that is if you own the company and the company has to be genuine, you can move the entire case to your company and uh, and run it. And uh, But before you do that, it's good to talk to, to, to the lawyer who's working on your case or something to make sure that you will meet the requirements of AC21. And if you need help on that, you can give us a call. Uh, I'll be glad to, to, to prepare the letter for you. And uh, But you just it is possible, uh, first answer. And two, it just has to be done properly, okay? Okay. Yeah, thank you for uh, the answer and taking my call. Yeah, I'll definitely get in touch with you uh, whenever I think about uh, doing that. Yeah, just definitely, if you need help on that. You just have to meet those two requirements and the rest will follow, okay? okay. Yeah, but my only okay. concern was that if we come up with some RFP or something, because uh, 485 is pending for a long time, and uh, uh, just wanted to make sure that I don't get into other problems uh, uh, by doing that. Yeah, it's it definitely true because you don't you waited so long you don't want to do it. So just make sure you're compliant with that. As long as you're compliant, the company is genuine and you're moving to the same or similar position. You should not have any issues. Okay? Okay, okay sure. Good luck. Sure. Good, good luck to you. Let me take another call at Chapter I eleven, yeah? Hi. Uh, my name is Hi. Deepa and I uh, want to know if about the L one visa. Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes, so, I'm um, Yeah, so we have a L1 individual and L1 blanket visa. So in mm-hmm. individual, I want to know if if there is an individual visa and we have multiple branches in US, if all the branches are mentioned in that visa and the employee moves from one location to another location, do we do amendment or we don't have to? L1, does, there was no requirement really on the L1 to do amendment. But you might want to just inform where you're working as you go. But there's no requirement really to do an amendment every time you move. It's not like H1B. However, if you are in L, is it L1A or L1B? L1B. Okay. Or also on well, L1A, both. You have both. How can you have both? I'm, I'm confused. No, no, no. It's not. It's not me. Uh, so we have uh, um, colleagues who are on L1A and L1B. To want mm-hmm. to know what is the procedure because ah uh, you're talking they... about your employees right technically no yeah. you don't have to do an amendment there's no sign your case on that however uh, it might become an issue uh, down the road on, on the L1B that you might because of the salary etc so always mm-hmm. make sure you're compliant with what we call the the salary in the area for example and things like that so no there's no requirement really to do like amendment and the and the uh, and the L1 they have not come up like a time your case but i have never really looked into that issue so i need to look a little bit further to give you a final answer but as far as i know there's nothing really to do like like the uh like the H1B where you have to really kind of uh, explain when you move out. okay 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 yeah because on um, line it yeah. go ahead that uh, for L1 um, if they are individual visa for the blanket, it's okay. But if it is L1, A or B, if they are moving in multiple locations, you have to do amendment. No, usually no, because there's no requirement, especially on the L1, A, there's none. L1, B, okay. I have to double check. That's what I, I wanted to, to make sure. Yeah. So I'll double oh, okay. check on that because this is a new question. This it has not happened before because most people were working on H1, so we focused on that. But yeah, I'm going to check okay. on that for you and let you know probably okay. uh, in the couple of days. Okay? All okay, right? thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Let me take another phone call. This is Shaprai, you're live on here. Hello? 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 Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if we have having callers right now. I'm having we do have Shaprai, a caller. Shaprai, you're live on here. Hello? Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Thanks for taking the call. Uh, I have oh, a okay. specific uh, question. Uh, mm-hmm. We filed our green card a uh, long back. And, Can you uh, speak a little bit louder? I'm having some technical issues. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Go ahead, go ahead. We have, 
we have filed our green card long back a few years back and i have a question that uh, according to like i monitor the visa bulletin kind of uh, monthly and according to the usps visa bulletin whatever cases for green card which is employing employer base i also, cannot hear you i'm sorry you okay. need to speak a little bit louder. I'm so sorry. We're okay. having some technical issues and the sound is so low. Can you okay, I'll, I'll speak a little, little more loud, yes. So, okay. according to the visa bulletin of USCIS, the cases for employee employer-based green card they are working has the same month as my priority date. So, they are working on mm-hmm. those cases which has the same priority date month as uh, mine. So I want to know that after my priority date becomes current or whatever you call it what are the mm-hmm. steps i should expect and how much time i should wait until i hear something from them let's say okay. last month my priority date uh, they were working on those cases so i should wait more or i should just inquire something okay that's a good question usually when the dates become current if the medical is is expired if the medical is, is valid i think for for 12 or 15 months they will send an RFC they will ask for the medical they will also ask for a current letter of employment yes yeah, those are the changes yeah yeah i'm sorry to cut you in the middle those are the things we already finished it we already got it last year in september those requests okay. and we have finished all the medical and whatever the okay. other process is okay beautiful Okay then what you need to do as soon as your date becomes current ask your lawyer to send an email they have an email for that it's called TST email we just need to shoot an email and usually they will process it within the next 30 days to 60 days if the date doesn't retrogress you should get your green card if the date retrogress you won't get the green card you have to wait again okay right. okay so i should okay. check with my lawyer yeah just ask your lawyer to send an email if the dates are current there's an email for TST email Uh, okay. And MS, uh, and this email, it's it's it's, a, it's kind of a quick email that you should. Uh, it used to work very efficiently, but recently it has it has kind of not worked. But you can <laughs> try that. But you have to be a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Then they will they will take it. But usually people send it. It works. And um, just tell him to shoot that email, and hopefully things will be cleared within a couple of days. Okay. 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 Uh, Thank you. Thanks for answering. Good luck to you. Wish you all the best. Let me take another call. And this is Sharp Riley, the live one. No other callers. Hello. So thank you, Franco. Today we are really doing it manually, and it's excellent. We're doing we're a great team on this. And I really apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for all the issues we we are having. It's, it's pretty much coming from my side, not even from the radio, because I'm doing the show remotely. So I apologize for that. And we were talking a lot about about issues that we we can expect in the next few months. and uh, also there's an alert for students uh I've been getting calls recently in the past few days students are being returned from the airport and uh I uh and uh, those who are coming on a valid visa are getting returned and it's kind of very unfair because many of the people they pay good earn money to come to school here and at the airport they're just getting denied for no reason and it's not really fair uh so I um I really feel bad for them so but I'm not advising people to travel right now especially if you you don't have a step of F1 and you're traveling you're on OPT or your school is having some issues a small school etc so you need to be very careful and uh, the truth is that we have a lot of, of issues coming up and hopefully until the elections once the election is finished we are hoping this will get better but right now there's a lot of tug of war between the parties and in the middle of that many uh many of the um, what we call uh, many people are suffering in the middle so ladies and gentlemen i i don't know if my my voice is still going through the air franco uh, 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 am i uh, uh, are people hearing me okay so this is shop right here yeah? hello so ladies and gentlemen i am not going to go too long i'm going to talk a little bit about about quickly about debt settlement and for those who are calling and not able to reach out, out today today I really apologize because of the technical issues and you can call our office for a consultation 510-742-5887 and fortunately in consultation it is paid but uh, when we come to um to on the radio I can do some free quick advice that I mean at least an educational advice but unfortunately if you call the office it will be a paid consultation 
and left with a quick question, you can post it on our forum to splawforum.com. So before I move on to, to Amit, I, I know Amit is there, I'm going to talk a little bit about debt settlement because this is coming really strong right now. We are getting a lot of people calling because they've been laid off. They have credit card debt. They have litigation debt. Even some people second mortgages because the problem that they are facing is that many people, uh, there is an anticipation that something is going to happen uh, in the economy. So a lot of people are trying to get out of the second mortgages. And the banks are working with us sometimes right now. So if you have any second mortgage, you have any any, any credit card debt, a, any debt uh, except student loan, uh, we can we might be able to help. The number to call is 510-742-5887. What we do in debt settlement is not what you see on TV. It's not debt consolidation. Debt settlement is basically we negotiate the debt for a fraction of its value for you. For example, you owe $100,000. We can make it around around twenty thousand dollars, an example, right? And uh, it's not always like that. But then you pay one time and you get rid of the debt completely; it doesn't come back. So it's a it's a good way to 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 avoid bankruptcy. And sometimes, you know, when you go in litigation, it takes so long and you pay so much money to the lawyers. We can avoid that. We can just cut to the chase, make a deal, and get you out of there. But we have done a lot, a lot of them. If you need help, five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. And uh, also some announcement, we have the podcast now, which is running on iTunes. Uh, we need to uh, please uh, subscribe to it and, and, and put some good reviews for us. And also we have uh, the, the, the petition going on, reduce the time on the, on the EB2 because a lot of people are suffering. Hopefully we are coming with a compilation of stories of, uh, of what's happening to people and, and that will have an impact. We, we are creating basically an awareness campaign in the next few months on the EB2 and EB3 backlog. So good luck to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. And uh, Amit, are you... Hello? Hey, Shah. Hi, Amit. I'm so sorry, How are you? today we got some technical issues. I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you finish the show and... Uh, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> Thank you, Franco. You you've been awesome today, Franco. I really, really appreciate.